While I've been using the Sony a7 IV, I've been using a lot of accessories along with it. And with those accessories, every time I used one and loved it, I wrote it down in an Evernote so I could make a video about it. And I've come up with my top 10 favorite accessories for the Sony a7 IV. First up, and unsurprisingly, batteries. I've been chewing through a lot of batteries with my a7 IV, and I've been using a mixture of V-mount batteries, power delivery, high output USB-C power banks, and just the normal regular NPF-Z batteries that comes with the camera. I have a whole video going over the different powering options for the Sony a7 IV and a7S III, and I'll leave a link to that video at the end of this one. My next accessory for the Sony a7 IV are filters. I've been using a mixture of Tiffin and the Peter McKinnon Polar Pro VNDs for my neutral density filters, but when it comes to mist filters, I've been using Nisi 1 8 Pro Mist filters, and I've been absolutely loving it. Every once in a while, if I want a really stylized look, I'll step up to that one quarter mist, but I've been really loving the one eighth mist. It just gives enough diffusion without being washed out. I've also been loving this Nisi carrying case for my filters. I've been using it and it has eight slots and it takes up less room than a lens in my bag. So no matter where I go, I have enough filters with me. The next thing I've been using with my Sony a7 IV is tripods. This is the new small rig tripod that has the twist locks on the legs. I'm a very big fan of these twist locks because those lever locks have a tendency to snag things when you're traveling with them. This tripod does come with a case, but I find myself traveling with this like this as is. And I'm a big fan of this center column because it has two different sections that you can raise up. And I find myself with most tripods that have one section, it's never quite enough. And then I have to go through and use all three legs adjust a little bit to just get a little bit more space. So I like having the safety of having one more column here. If I need a little bit more reach or height with my tripod, I can use this center column here. So I've been a big fan of this tripod. It's about a hundred bucks. I'm not really the biggest fan of this tripod head though. This is a fluid head, but it's really kind of difficult to get really smooth pans since if you have this drag too tight, it will actually loosen up on the tripod head itself. So I've been able to get smooth pans with it and it does come with the tripod for $100, but there are better heads out there. The tripod legs are good. The fluid head is usable, but you just have to really be careful with it. My next accessory for the a7 IV is partly right here, but it is to rig out the camera with any other components you need. I just made a a7 IV build video, so I'll leave that linked at the end of the video as well, so you can check that one out. But rigging the camera however you need to, if you had to have a V-mount battery, then you can have rails and all kinds of different stuff. I deep dive into my run and gun and then my all day filming setup in that video. So uh, be sure to check out that one at the end of this video. My fifth accessory for the Sony a7 IV are gimbals. I have the DJI RS2 and I have the Zhuin Crane 2S. So I've been using both of these gimbals. I find myself using the RS2 more than the Crane though, because I think it is a little bit more solid and I absolutely love the screen on the back of this gimbal for quickly changing gimbal settings. And I have more videos about the RS2 that I'll leave at the end of this video again. But if you are on a budget, the Crane 2S is a pretty good gimbal, especially if you have a bigger camera. However, if you can swing it, I would recommend getting the RS2 just for general usability and the performance of this is really good. My sixth accessory for the Sony a7 IV are microphones. I have a whole video going over my microphones for my rigs that I use, but the two that I've been using lately are the Deity Pocket Wireless. If I'm shooting someone and they're gonna be a little bit farther away, or if they're closer, I can use the Deity D3 Pro. And this has been my go-to out run and gun setup. If I have a little bit more time to set up, I'll be using my Sennheiser MKH416 and my Tascam X8. I think the sound quality out of this is great. However, in a pinch, if I just need to mic someone up quickly, the Deity Pocket Wireless is an awesome quick way to do so. Again, I'll leave the link to my microphones that I use at the end of this video and in the description below. My seventh accessories for the Sony a7 IV are monitors. 
I've been using my Ninja 5 with my A7S 3 and I've been using this cheaper Feel World monitor with my A7 IV. The Ninja 5 can do ProRes RAW, so I've been using this with my A7S 3 However, the A7 IV can't do ProRes RAW, so I've just been using a dedicated cheap monitor with it, and this larger screen allows me to see from a distance this camera, and it does have some tools like peaking and zebra stripes that are also pretty helpful. The quality of this Fuel World monitor isn't quite up to par with the Ninja 5, but when you compare the prices of these two devices, the Fuel World doesn't have to be as good as this Ninja 5. Sometimes just having a larger, affordable screen is really nice. And with monitors comes HDMI cables. I can't not talk about this right angle HDMI cable. This has been really nice if I need to have a nice clean setup. This uh, Condor blue cable is nice. However, it does come straight out of the side of the camera. So when you plug it into the monitor, you're obstructing a pretty big side of your camera. With this right angle cable, it comes straight out of your camera and straight up so you can still hold on to the side of the camera and not have to work around that HDMI cable. The Condor Blue cable is capable of shooting ProRes RAW with the A7S 3 but since, again, we're not gonna be filming ProRes RAW with the A7 IV, this cable works just fine. <laughs> My eighth dirty accessory for the Sony a7 IV is the Low Pro 450 AW bag. They also make this in a smaller 350 AW, but I love the 450. This has been all over the world with me. It's able to safely transport tons of camera gear, and it doesn't really look like a giant camera bag. It looks like a specialized bag, but it doesn't scream technology to me. It screams like kind of almost like an army bag or something. This has tons of space in it. I'm able to fit my 16 inch MacBook Pro on top, all kinds of cleaning supplies on top, lenses, my drones, cameras, all kinds of stuff. So I've really loved this bag and I love that the dividers on this are really rigid. So if you have a lot of stuff, even if it's like lightweight materials, on some other bags, these padded dividers are kind of flimsy, but the padded dividers on the Low Pro 450 AW are really rigid and keep everything very protected. This bag was a little expensive when I first bought it, so I kind of had to bite the bullet to buy it, but I'm so glad I did because I've used it every day since, and it's kept all of my gear protected. I've never had anything be damaged when I'm using this bag. My ninth accessory for the Sony a7 IV is storage and a SD card holder. I've been using the V60 256 Pro grade cards and I've been loving the amount of storage they have and how fast they are. When you're shooting that 422 10-bit file, you're going to start filling up memory cards like crazy, and if you have multiple cameras going for one single shoot, you're going to need a lot of large capacity memory cards. So make sure you have enough memory cards to depend on what shoot you're doing, and make sure you have a way of storing them. And I tend to do all of my empty cards go on one side and when I fill one up, I put it on the other side and then just take a card there. So uh, for me, the left side is empty cards, right side has data on it. So that's just my cheap little way of knowing which cards are empty and which cards have data on them. I would always say buy as much storage as you can afford, but don't be afraid to get a lot of storage because things fill up quickly. And speaking of storage, my 10th accessory for the Sony a7 IV is hard drives, lots of hard drives. My workflow has been, I've been working off of Samsung T7 SSD drives, and when I'm out and about, I will back up my T7 on a tough, rugged, lacy drive. So I will have always at least a backup of my working files. If something were to happen with my T7 drive, I still have a backup of those files. I may have lost the data or the edit that I did, but I'll have the source files still recoverable on a different, completely different drive. When I'm done with a project, I will move it over to these Toshiba drives that are really cheap. I think you can get these on Amazon for like, four or five terabytes for between 90 and 100 bucks. So um, that might sound like a lot, but whenever you're dealing with a lot of projects, always having a backup of those is really helpful. I generally have two of these hard drives. One of them's plugged into my computer right now, and this is the backup uh, to my photo library this year. Those are my 10 accessories for the a7 IV. And here is the video with my a7 IV rig and the microphones I use with all of my cameras. 
Thank you guys for sticking around to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.